Part 109 The tide officially turns. Abu Sufyan was furious. He called Huyai ibn Akhtab, leader of the Banu Nadir, and demanded an explanation. Huyai explained the concept of the Sabbath, and Abu Sufyan was left perplexed and unsatisfied, shouting, By Allah and al Uzza, this is your treachery. Huyai was so panicked that he sneaked back into the Banu Kareza and pleaded with them to break the Sabbath despite being a Jew himself. As a devout Jew, Ka'b ibn Asad was insulted at the very notion and flatly refused. Huyai was so fearful of the consequences that he chose to remain within the fortress of the Banu Kureza and did not return to the Quraysh. Meanwhile, the Muslims were unaware of the collapsing allegiances of the Confederates. A fierce storm began to brew, and by the evening it was described as the worst storm some of the companions ever experienced. The Prophet asked for a volunteer to enter enemy territory and gather information. Hudhaifa ibn al-Yaman narrated the story in the first person. One day, decades later, some young successors were discussing the Battle of Handak, and they began waxing lyrical about their own bravery and how they would have fought valiantly for the Prophet. One young successor exclaimed, I would not have let the Prophet walk on his own feet. I would have carried him on my back. Hudhaifa was incensed at their disrespect of the companions, and he narrated, I will tell you of that night. We were with the Prophet, and a fierce storm was gathering all around us. The Quraysh were above us, and the Banu Quraysa were below us, quoting Surah 33, verse 10, and we were scared for our own families. No night had come upon us darker and colder than that night. The wind itself sounded like thunder, and it was so dark that we could not see our fingertips if we extended our hands. The Prophet then stood up and said, who will bring me news of the enemy, and I shall be his companion on the day of judgment? Not a single soul replied. The prophet asked again, Who will bring me news of the enemy, and I shall be his companion on the day of judgment? Once again, no one responded. The prophet asked for a third time, Who will bring me news of the enemy, and I shall be his companion on the day of judgment? And no one stood up. The prophet finally said, O oh, Hudhaifa! You go and bring me news of the enemy. The prophet named me, so I had no choice but to comply. Hudhaifa humbly depicted the desperation amongst the companions and their depleted energy levels after weeks of malnutrition and a harsh environment. No one had the energy to be the hero, but when called upon, Hudhaifa did not hesitate to obey the command. Hudhaifa stood up, shivering and trembling from the fear and freezing cold and the Prophet made dua for him. O oh Allah, preserve and protect him from in front, from behind, from his right, from his left, from above, and from below. Hudayfa commented, After that dua, every fear that I felt disappeared from my heart. He walked through the unforgiving darkness and howling winds, and finally made it to the Quraysh's camp. Hudayfa was chosen due to his bravery, but also because he was an Ansari and the Quraysh did not recognize him. He said, I saw someone that I figured must be Abu Sufyan. I had a clear shot, and I was about to reach for my arrow until I remembered that the Prophet instructed me to remain anonymous. Abu Sufyan announced, I am about to speak confidentially, so each of you verify the identity of the person next to you. In his quick-wittedness, Hudhaifa grabbed the person to his right aggressively and demanded, Who are you? He then grabbed the person to the left and demanded, Who are you? They both identified themselves, and due to his projected aura of confidence and authority, they did not think to ask him. Abu Sufyan continued, My people, we are away from our homes and we cannot remain here forever. Our animals have perished, our horses are tired, and the Banu Kureza have betrayed us. The winds are harming us so much that we cannot light a fire nor keep our pots closed. I advise you to all leave. As for me, I have decided. He then marched straight to his camel and left. Hudhaifa returned to base and found the prophet praying. He narrated, Whenever the prophet was disturbed, he would turn to prayer. The prophet prayed, O Allah, revealer of the book, swift to account. Destroy the confederates, destroy them and shake the ground beneath them. The prophet was so cold that he was praying with a blanket wrapped around him. He noticed Hudhaifa shivering and motioned to him to join him inside the blanket as he prayed. Hudhaifa then sat beside the Prophet's feet 
and the prophet prayed until he finished. Hudhaifa then informed the prophet of the good news, and Allah revealed, O believers, O believers, remember Allah's favor upon you when enemy forces came to besiege you, so we sent against them a bitter wind and forces you could not see, and Allah is all-seeing of what you do. Surah 33, verse 9. Humiliated and disgraced, the Quraysh left, never to return again. The tide had officially turned. 